Um, welcome to my channel, Mo Moon Tarot. My name is Moharet Jezebel Morgan Moon. And today I am going to add another excerpt to my Vampire Diary Chronicles. As you may or may not know, I became enraptured, enraptured with the vampires through the books of Anne Rice. May she rest in peace and power. Her characters drew me in to a world where humanity was expressed to a point where I felt a connection to her characters. And as you may or may not know, Lestat is the brat prince, the main character of most of the books and the, the foundation with which the rest of the characters are built. And I always um, felt drawn to her characters, um, Armand, Louis, Claudia, Lestat, um, Marius, the Queen of the Damned, um, many, many characters she has in her books. She has several books. So today I'm going to jog my memory as to my vampire. Um, I'm going to jog my memory as to what I remember with my time uh, feeling the energy of the vampire. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to use the Tarot of Vampire by Ian Daniels, the Tarot of Vampire. And this lovely tarot deck comes with a, a full color, was it full color? Hmm. Well, no, it's not full color, but it is a full book of descriptions to the cards. It says Phantasmagoria on the top, Ian Daniels. So, if you would like to come along on this journey through my mind to find the memories of my vampire past and perhaps to engage in the energies of the vampire present, please keep watching. Let's draw a card. Interesting, we have four cards. Now, I don't think I will read all four cards from the book because it may take too long. But let me just take a look at these cards. They tell a story of Marius. We have the Six of Knives. And this to me looks like Marius. During my evolution over the past 10 years, I was guided by a spirit guide who treated me quite harshly, who, who enforced tough love, but who also fell in love with me during our journey together over the past 10 years and who could not get me off of his mind. All this to say that Vampire Marius, who is represented with this card, Six of Knives, and why I say this is because he looks like Vampire Marius to me. And Vampire Marius is a protector. Whenever this past spirit guide who did fall in love with me over the past 10 years, whenever he comes around and tries to bring me back into that world, Vampire Marius, my spirit guide, prevents him from doing that. Then we have the Seven of Grails. And this card... The Seven of Grails reminds me of the Queen of the Damned. And as you may or may not know, I did grow up in a Christian home and I accepted Jesus into my heart when I was six years old. Now that's quite all right when you think about it because there is such a thing as the Christ consciousness and Jesus is an ascended master and he is in heaven and he is very powerful. So that's all great. But when you think about all the dogma and the religious rules that come with the energy of Christianity, you see how it could be very easily a, a, a vessel for poison, for poisonous thoughts, for poisonous ideas, for poisonous upbringing, for a poisonous upbringing where you 
are ashamed about yourself because you feel like you're a sinner and you're always doing something wrong and you always need to ask for forgiveness. So the seven of grails for me represents the queen of the damned. Because as I grew up in my Christian upbringing, I became very passionate about the Hebrew God who is talked about in the book as we know it as the Bible. We have the Hebrew God in the Bible. And I drew uh, a relationship with the Hebrew God um, just before my just before my uh, introduction to my spirit guide, who I will rename, uh, who I will leave nameless. You know, I don't want to put his name out there. But this spirit guide that I met a, a little bit over ten years ago now, he came at the time when I was turning away from the Hebrew God, and when I was in love with the Hebrew God, I would sing to him. I would I would want to give my talents to him. I would want to, I was on my way to becoming an RN, a registered nurse, um, and I wanted to volunteer my time like Mother Teresa or Florence Nightingale on the ships called the Mercy Ships. And I wanted to pay to go to the Mercy Ship and volunteer my services as an RN, as a nurse, um, on the Mercy Ships, helping people in third world countries. So as you see, I developed this um, identity as the queen of heaven, the queen of heaven, doing God's bidding in the world, loving him, praying to him for an hour a day, daily for three years straight, and reading my Bible six times front to back, calling him my king, uh, honoring him through my life and trying to make sure that I did all the right things that, they, that we were told to do in church so that I could please this Hebrew God. And I was the queen of heaven doing all this. And then when I fell from heaven, I became the queen of the damned, which is what we see here, the seven of grails. From the queen of heaven to the queen of the damned. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. So that's the story for me behind the queen of the damned and this card seven of grails as far as the vampires go. The next card we have here that I will pull up is the Eight of Scepters. And this Eight of Scepters very much reminds me of the Rebel Lestat. And this reminds me of the book by Anne Rice called Memnock the Devil. Because the devil was so interested in Lestat that he came to him with a proposition to him in the book Memnock the Devil. And Memnock was not the devil of the Bible as we know him. Perhaps you have not read the Bible. Perhaps you don't know what the devil is like in the Bible. But Memnock introduced himself as who he truly was in this book by Anne Rice. And you fell in love with this character, Memnock the devil. Of course, he wasn't a vampire. He was the devil. But he wanted Lestat to join him in his plight to help those fallen creatures, fallen from God's grace, to make their way back into heaven to be at the face of God. And, and Memnock the devil took Lestat, who we have here represented in the Eight of Scepters, and brought him into the presence of God, up through the pearly gates of heaven into the presence of God. And Lestat instantly fell in love with God and wanted to stay with God, but he could not. So Memnock took him out of heaven and brought him to the next step in his journey. But as Lestat was leaving heaven, he was saying, no, I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave this beautiful place. And sadly, he had to. So this card, Eight of Scepters, reminds me of that idea of wanting to be in heaven, but also the idea of absolution, the idea that as a vampire, you're, you're, you're damned from heaven and you're damned from hell. Satan won't accept you. God won't accept you. You're, you're destined to live a life wandering on this world through, throughout the darkness being rejected, being seen as a monster, having to feed off other lives to support yourself, or else having to become so cold that you don't need to feed anymore because you are just so cold and so dead. So as you can see, these themes, they, they're, they're, they're themes that come up in Anne Rice's books, but they're also themes that as human beings, beings most of us can identify with feeling like you need a sense of absolution, feeling like you want to find forgiveness, that you want to be accepted by the highest good, 
but you want to at least be accepted by anything. And the last card we have is the Emperor. It's very interesting because this card reminds me of Marius as well. But maybe it's because these two look so alike. However, this one here on the this side has green eyes and him over here, he has red eyes. However, it could just be that this is him before he feasted on blood. And this one in the Emperor card is him after he's feasted on blood. And Marius is in in her her books, Anne Rice's books. Marius is a character who raises Armand, if I'm not mistaken. Armand is another vampire who um, has quite a, a generous experience with Lestat in another book. But Marius was very much into art, as am I. And Marius mixed the paints and he taught his pupils how to paint. And he protected... Um, the young boys in his pa palace, in his castle, and he taught them the arts. And he never took what, what did not belong to him. And he was sovereign. And so it's funny how all this comes back to Marius because Marius is my vampire spirit guide. And then we have the emperor here who has fed, who has feasted, who has given into his very nature as a vampire. And, you know, vampires in Anne Rice's books, they bring a sort of phantasmagoria, a fantasy, uh, a sense of euphoria, really, uh, when they feed off their victims. And oftentimes they find their victims among people who are down and out, um, outcasts from the world, unaccepted. And they want to offer this final gift as they take their life to be able to experience a sense of heaven, a sense of euphoria. And so even though they're seen as vile creatures by many, they indeed do have a heart and they indeed do want to live out their purpose the best way that they can. And I guess that's kind of what I grapple with in my life is... I want to live out my purpose the best way that I can, but I feel misunderstood. And maybe you can identify with this. Maybe you as well feel misunderstood by so many people. And you've tried so many times to help others to give the, the best of yourself. And yet it has never been enough. And you feel like you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. And you feel like you need that absolution. You need that something to forgive you for something that you must have done wrong if you're not accepted. Let's draw one more card to end this Vampire Diary excerpt. We have the Three of Knives. You know, this card here looks like a child to me. She looks like an angel child. And, and yet she is a vampire because all the individuals in these cards are vampires. The tarot of vampire. So this one looks like a child too, actually. But she's in a cemetery and she has a rose with blood on the white snow. And she's obviously just fed on something because there's blood seeping out of her lip. And there are crows there. And I always feel like crows speak into your soul. I don't know if you've ever heard a crow crow. But don't you feel like they're getting really deep down into your soul when they do that? <coughs> they like get deep down into your soul and they wake you up and they get you moving. They get the blood pumping through your, through your heart, through your veins. And yet there's a sense of innocence to the crow with this card. There's a sense of innocence to just doing what makes you human and not feeling like you have to be judged for being good or being bad. Finally finding that absolution and knowing that even if you don't feel accepted, you are accepted, that the animals accept you, that the seasons accept you, that the snow accepts you, that even those who fear you accept you. 
deep down somewhere that they do believe that you are worthy. And I guess that's the plight of the vampire to just always seek that absolution, to seek that acceptance and never to be able to truly find it. And that's why I guess they are damned. However, as Lestat was able to go to heaven with Memnoch, we do understand that there is beauty in this world and that even if we don't understand it, it truly is there. We just need to believe it. So I hope you enjoyed this Vampire Diary excerpt. I did say I was going to read out of the book, but too many cards came out, so I wasn't able to read out of the book. Please comment down below if you feel any sort of connection to this message or if you feel like you want to ask me a question. If you want to subscribe to my channel, I'd be happy to have you here. Just press the subscription button and hit the notification bell so you don't um, miss an upload that I that I upload. <laughs> and um, if you want, you can like this video if it's something that interested you. And I do usually do tarot readings, but I'm hoping to do a little bit more um, videos on other things other than tarot, just like this one, even though I use tarot cards in this one. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, again, my name is Mo, Mo Moon, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.